I was scouted going to a Toronto Raptors game when I was 14 by uh, an agency from Paris. So I was like modeling as quite a young woman. My sister actually moved to New York, lived there with and modeled with IMG, so had quite a bit of success in the industry. Uh, so coming from a place where really values your looks to then an area which, you know, tech, you don't have to look like anything, right? I mean, they're not some sort of supermodels that are running Facebook. Uh, <laughs> no, my brother works there and actually he did do some modeling, ironically enough, but he, he was never a supermodel. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome on into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. And you know what? It feels like just a day ago that we were sipping whiskey with Stanley Cup winning head coach John Cooper from the Tampa Bay Lightning. And well, I mean, maybe a day ago or a hundred days ago, I'm not really sure at this point, but the next NHL season is fast approaching allegedly at this point as well we are about to see the nwhl season begin and we're sort of getting over a tournament a world junior tournament i'm not sure maybe america won i'm not i don't really know at this point but the best person that we could have right now to sort of whet our palate our appetite for the hockey season is none other than hockey analyst and co-founder of the company stat leads megan chica thank you so much for joining us here today all the way from god's country you're in toronto canada my hometown and we have known each other from actually horse racing was sort of the first time we worked together on the queen's plate this summer but we're both hockey heads you especially and we are sipping on some coffee here today, right? What do we what do we have? Absolutely. You need it, right? You need to get through the days. So long winters in Canada, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I, I got you. I have some Tim Hortons in my curling <laughs> stone right here for you because of my Canadian guest. And Megan, we know it's it's sort of an odd time in America in the world we're dealing with a lot but we still like to figure out the positives in our life what are we cheersing and toasting to today I think to hockey coming back the NHL and also the women playing on NBC the first time that the women have been on one of those uh, you know major networks so really exciting stuff for hockey I think it'll be a lot of fun and a good break from all the COVID talk awesome cheers let's go ladies <laughs> get that coffee in mm. Everyone's been picking coffee on drinks with things. I think that is the new drink of the season. Uh, Megan, you have such an interesting career and you've been a trailblazer, especially, of course, in the analytics community. And I was reading about the fact that you sort of got into this from filming your brother, John Chica's games when his OHL games, when, you know, you were younger and then you're able to develop this company staff leads. Like, how have you seen, first of all, for those of those watching, who don't know, tell us about your company and how you've seen it evolve from when you first started it. Sure, so we started probably like 13, 14 years ago. Basically, we're a hockey data and analytics uh, company. We do data products, work in 22 leagues worldwide, have clients in Europe. So we're actually quite used to working remote. I mean, data is pretty remote anyways, right? You don't have to be physically in any location to work with technology. So we didn't really have you know, a tough time adapting to COVID because we were very used to like being wherever and talking to our clients. So uh, typically we work with leagues, teams, players, agents. Some of your favorite players work with us, some of the best teams in the world, best leagues, uh, and just try to make, you know, technology and data really work for people. So whether you want to win games, whether you want to, you know, make better media products, uh, win the Stanley Cup, obviously, you had John Cooper on here, so I don't know if I'm the best person to follow him, but, you know, cheers to the Tampa Bay Lightning, too, for pulling that off. Uh, so, yeah, we've just been doing it for a long time, and to me, I know I always played sports, I was always involved uh, on the tech data side, so I was a super nerd in school, was the number one student, thought I was going to be, you know, a doctor, as usual, number one student <laughs> wanted you know, pursue something that actually would have been very useful during this time. Yeah. Instead, I went into sports uh, and yeah, just started working with engineers and, and different people to try to figure out some of these uh, issues that we had with data and hockey. 
Yeah, I think that's fascinating because you are working in the sports world, in the hockey world, coming at it from a different angle. And from an angle that for many years was sort of looked at as, oh, what is this sort of all these numbers and garbledy gook and all this when it was sort of the eye test. And as we know, scouts, how they've gone down their paths of, of evaluating talent and evaluating how a, a player is doing. And from when when you started to now like you said you have all these teams and players in what way have you seen the hockey world embrace analytics when maybe perhaps they weren't so warm to it before yeah and i think it's even like how it's you know optics and how it's viewed so instead of analytics all the time which sometimes people view as you know very theoretical high level uh, we tend to talk like data or information. Do you want more information on this player? If no, great. If yes, why not? Uh, and we found that as one over a lot of people, especially in these times when you can't travel, you can't be in the arena, you can't watch every game in the world either. That's the one very interesting thing about hockey. It's such an international game. There's you know players playing all the time and good talent uh, that's you know been underappreciated in previous years. So Sweden, Finland, Germany. A lot of great players are coming out of, of different leagues. So being able to understand, track their player development, uh, figure out if they fit on your team or how you can acquire them. There's so many use cases for data that I think, um, you know, there's really no reason to say no anymore. Right, definitely more information and you can use it with other different methods of, of evaluating talent. So tell us, like we talk about analytics and this gives us more information and all these things, but like what exactly do you do? What do you do when you watch a game? Yeah, so we are actually quite on the tech side. So I'd say I spend 80% of my time in like the tech world and only 20% of it in hockey or sports. So on, you know, with technology, you're looking at different ways to capture data, different ways to present it to, to clients. So if you're working with a league, that's a, you know, a different problem than if, if you're working with a player. So we've created ways to access the data, to understand it, to visualize it and then hopefully to implement it in ways that make sense and that are meaningful. Okay, so then let's go a bit further. Like, what exactly? So I'm watching I'm watching a, a pretty uh, difficult game the other night, the Canada, USA, whatever. I don't know what. I, don't, I can't remember how that one ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, what would, you, what would you be watching in a game like that? Every time there is movement on the ice, it's recorded and tracked. So we have a very good understanding of recreating the game without actually having any of the video. We know just from a data perspective where every player is, if they're making a pass, if it's on their backhand forehand, if they're getting completed, if they you know, are good at closing gaps, if they see passing lanes. Uh, we have a lot of different information that's you know, never been used before in hockey. And I will say a lot of what we do take from is soccer because, you know, it's such a huge international game and it's actually a lot easier to solve because, you know, they're on a really big field, the ball's pretty visible mm -hmm. and hockey is so fast. And a lot of times they wear white jerseys on white ice, which is hard to track, you know, tiny puck uh, and a lot of contact. So we really had to dig deep with what makes sense in terms of technology of how to solve some of those problems. Right, yeah, I, I, I know exactly what that's like. I used to be a shot lister for Hockey Night in Canada, and I have to make a note of every time <laughs> something happened. And it, it, I did not make all of the right notes, let's just say, because it moves so fast. Uh, this is Drinks with Binks, and we've got hockey analyst Megan Chica with us. Don't go anywhere. Hi, it's Linda Cohn. I can't believe it. I had drinks with Binks coffee, no alcohol, no Kahlua in it. You know, it's daytime, uh, maybe if it was at night. But anyway, that's for another time, another day, post-pandemic. What an honor. Wait till you watch this. Mmm, coffee. Welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and I'm so thrilled to be joined by hockey analyst, co-founder of the hockey analytics company, Stathletes, Megan Shaika. And Megan, uh, we were just discussing like what you look at with data and how you analyze the game, what kind of information it gives you. And your company has now partnered with the NWHL, as you mentioned off the top, that they're going to be on NBC, which is huge for women's hockey and just, uh, I mean, such a huge step forward for women in sports in general and so 
many different aspects of the field. What do you want to be sort of the, the end goal of this partnership? I think for me, it's, you know, just giving back to women in sports, women athletes. Uh, you know, I think as you get successful, like a mark of a person is what they leave behind or in their path. So for me, it's just a way to leverage what we've built. Uh, and to be honest, I really feel like these athletes, whether it's the NWHL or at the Olympics, are at the highest level that you can be in the world. So they deserve our respect and support. And there's a ton of leagues that, you know, haven't figured out the exact equation of how to make money or how to move forward, but we still respect and support them. And I see women's sports as no different than that. Uh, not only that, I mean, there's, you know, 50% of the world are women. We want to watch mm -hmm women play as well uh, and same with young men I, mean, I don't think that there's any market that you know doesn't tick off a certain like fandom of women's hockey and to me it's been like one of the best finals in the olympics as well as an event uh, so there's no reason it shouldn't be the four years after that yeah, and you've also been very vocal on Twitter. I love, like, I like all your posts about uh, women's empowerment, having women in, in, in positions, holding front office positions and positions of power. And when we look at some other leagues, NFL, NBA, MLB, even within as coaching positions as well, it seems as though there's movement in terms of getting more women involved. But hockey, the NHL, it seems on the outside, I don't know necessarily for sure, that there's not as much representation of women. Why do you think that is? I'm not really sure. I think as Canadians, we're a bit more conservative. And, you know, hockey being so big in this country, I think it just lags a bit behind the other sports in terms of, you know, having that progressive attitude and taking risks. I would say, though, you know, I think there's a really good pipeline. Um, and I think the you know, usual issue that some men will say is like, of course you can't coach football, you never played football. Well, now they have football coaches and referees that are women mm -hmm. that also have played too. Uh, and there's a huge pool of women's hockey players or people that are just fans. So I see, you know, all of those old excuses to not hold any water. And I really think that 2021 is a year where women will really push through and the people that take advantage of these really strong candidates will be far ahead of, you know, any other team or league that doesn't do it. Right. And you're in two different worlds that are typically very male dominated with sports and tech. And we've all experienced uh, being marginalized, especially as, as women in this industry, because it is largely male dominated. But for you in particular, like in what ways have um, maybe you noticed uh, that that it's been difficult based on your gender to get people to even just take your company seriously? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, um, I would say like going back to my history as well, I was scouted going to a Toronto Raptors game when I was 14 by uh, an agency from Paris. So I was like modeling as quite a young woman. My sister actually moved to New York, lived there with and modeled with IMG, so had quite a bit of success in the industry. Uh, so coming from a place where really values your looks to then an area which you know, tech, you don't have to look like anything, right? I mean, they're not some sort of supermodels that are running Facebook. Uh, <laughs> no, my brother works there. And actually, he did do some modeling, ironically enough, but he, he was never a supermodel. <laughs> but, you know, it, they, they value your, uh, you know, your, your output, your brains, what you do, being creative, a whole different skill set than I think is like typically paid for or valued in the, you know, modeling or that sort of world. So kind of like going in between those worlds, I was trying to like take the energy and the best things of them and sort of discard the negativity, you know, obviously like modeling and things super picky. Like you can never be pretty enough. You can never be skinny enough. There's always someone that's going to book a job that you really want. Same within like sports or tech. Like I walked into rooms and people, I'm not even joking, have like laughed. And wow. just, it wasn't what? on the, the schedule. They've never had a woman speaker at some of these like events or boards. And they thought I was going to be clearing up the plates. And, you know, and and uh, there's a few times I have been a little bit like hurt by it in terms of we're in like 2019 when this is like happening. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I, I had this discussion actually with a, a group from my work because I think once you break down those barriers, you're very memorable of anyone outside of a white man. Uh, so 
you know, no one misses me in an arena. I'm six foot tall, I'm blonde, which is how I was born. I can't really change that, uh, but I certainly stand out. So I try to use whatever I can, uh, you know, in a positive mind frame and, you know, hope for the best. Yeah, and I mean, the fact that um, it's unsurprising hearing your story like that because this sports world is littered with a lot of dinosaurs who don't take women seriously and kind of look at them as, uh, you know, and objectify them in a way. Um, have you found NHL teams change their behavior in terms of, maybe not that's not the right word, but like, have, have you seen it evolve and in what way? Like you said that they kind of like were surprised at you at first, but in what way is their behavior different now? I think especially at the NHL level, though, I mean, there's a lot of really good professionals in that league and, and at the highest levels. And I think to be really successful for in the long term, you know, you a lot of people are good people. Uh, of course, the bad apples, we always hear about them. But I would I say to a lot of women, like, don't be discouraged from working in sports. I mean, tech, like when the stakes are higher, tech and finance, do you think those guys are nicer? Right. So, uh, you know, it's just a problem that you have across the board in terms of navigating a career as a woman. Yeah. I would also say though, you know, when I was younger, I think I was quite naive in terms of, oh, people really want to help you or that. And I think as you get more successful, you have to just have that many more barriers, know how to like conduct yourself professionally, what's acceptable, what's not accept acceptable, and try to find women like you, right? Smart, powerful, really smart women, uh, you know, Women that work in sports, I would say, are you know upper class in terms of people that are gritty and intelligent because you have to be to have a space. So I really try to look for women allies in, in sport, the sport world, uh, outside of hockey especially, because there are some that are quite powerful and you know have really good feedback on, on how they got around uh, issues or just like even your emotional capacity to deal with that. Yeah, that's such a that's such great advice, and I think we've seen in especially in in the hockey world. There's a couple different instances this year uh, alone that we've all sort of like come together as females. Whether it's you know the Mike Milbury incident, and it just felt like there was just like a really good strong sisterhood of women that work in this sport that are like, yeah, no, that's not okay. Yeah, and not okay. just being able to advocate for one another, and 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 kind of just a new day right um but seeing your journey has got to be so inspiring for so many women who might not even be in the sports industry but in the tech industry and seeing uh, it see like it's like seeing colors i like to say seeing colors you haven't seen before right because you haven't seen anyone do it so that is just it's a huge pillar for moving women forward in this industry and there is more that i want to get to with you uh, especially on the upcoming nhl season and maybe some things that we can predict or expect and maybe the Leafs I mean who knows what will happen with them probably not a whole lot but we will find out after this break guys this is drinks with Banks. don't go anywhere hey this is John Cooper head coach of your Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning and I just had drinks with Banks. Welcome on back to Drinks with Thinks. I'm JSB. We're joined by Megan Shaika, who is the co-founder of hockey analytics company Stathletes and is such a trailblazer in the industry. We've been talking about hockey NWHL bubble that you're going to be a part of, but also the NHL season is quickly approaching. We know that it's a shortened season. It is still a global pandemic, and there's going to be a lot of hurdles along the way. From a data perspective, what is sort of uh, the biggest roadblock for you guys? I think just with such a shortened season, we don't really have any historical data on what, I think it's 56 games they're playing. So it's just so unusual to have a Stanley Cup in September and then to start the season now. Uh, hopefully we never have this again and we don't have to deal with it. We kind of use the last couple seasons as just the, the crazy. Uh, but that's definitely difficult when you're doing any sort of analysis that you like to have very, you know, constant, uh, the same type of schedule, the you know same comparables, essentially. Let's get to some nitty gritty stuff. Uh, I am, per se, a forward in the league, let's say. Sidney Crosby. Uh, I, like, what do I want? I'm coming to you for some help on blank. What is the biggest thing that forwards want um, for stats? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there's so many different types of players, especially in the NHL. 
Uh, typically when they're younger, you know, we're looking at player development. So their complete game, uh, not just offensively and getting on the score sheet, but you know what people want, which is could be like a puck moving defenseman or like you're saying, it could be a you know defensive forward, which are very hard to pick out if you don't actually have great scouts and the data to back it up. Uh, so some of those areas that, you know, typically you could be an elite player in the NHL, but just not score or pass a lot to, to scorers. Um, so we do a lot of work on that end. I would say the one interesting um, element of players, especially at that level, is like shooting talent. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that are pretty average. I mean, average in terms of an NHL yeah. player. And then there's a few anomalies. So a couple of them that really stand out are um, Patrick Lane from the Winnipeg Jets. He can shoot from quite far away and still score at a rate that's far above uh, other NHL players. The other one, which I am so sad that, you know, he had an interrupted season is Alex Ovechkin. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's going to be Gretzky's, uh, you know, record because of this like total chasm in what's the end of, you know, end few years of his career. Uh, but just a absolute powerhouse uh, when he's on the power play shooting. You know, he's going to be there. You know, he's taking the shot. Still can't stop it. You always know he's just yeah, hanging out in his office <laughs> right there. Uh, face off dot. He's just boom, you know, yeah. right is an incredible player. And uh, an interesting season, of course, with the Capitals upcoming with, you know, without Henrik Lundqvist. And we, you know, think and we hope and pray that he does well. And But with uh, Zidane O'Chara being a part of their blue line. But we've got to go to break. We could talk hockey a lot longer than my producer wants us to. But we <laughs> have to take this time out. We'll be back to say goodbye and find out where Megan Chaika is next. Don't go anywhere. Hey, everybody, it's uh, Eddie Olchek from the NHL on NBC and the Chicago Blackhawks television uh, network. And uh, I'm very proud and excited to have in drinks with Banks. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with Megan Chaika from Stathletes. And before we let you go, what is a stat that the regular Joe sitting on their couch can learn more about to see the game differently? I think one really good one, and it actually is bored from soccer, uh, it's called expected goals. So when you're looking at a rank, typically people think you have to get closer to the net to score. Unfortunately, it's very hard to score in the NHL. In a lot of cases, like a probability of a shot can be like below 10% of it's going in, even 5%, 2%. Uh, so you need to create an environment that gives you either the goaltender moving down out of the net, you know, a great pass off the rush. Uh, so we have all these calculations that then go and like tell you what is a good quality shot, what you should not score on, and what players are taking that. So typically when you see it, the bigger the dot, the more chance that that shot had to go in. The smaller the dot, the less. So if we were watching Canada last night, we would have wanted a lot of big dots and hoped that they paid off. If they have a lot of small dots, they're trending in the wrong direction and you might as well pour yourself another drink. Wow. that So I imagine there were a lot of small dots for Canada. <laughs> Because that was not not great. But that's amazing stat to understand then. So then us yahoos at home yelling at the TV screen can understand what is, uh, you know, a, a, an expected goal. As you mentioned, that is incredible information. Megan, thank you so much for enlightening us in a different realm on watching hockey and analytics. And, uh, you know, I'm just a big fan of yours. I love seeing how much you empower women with your social media channels. And if you could let everyone know where we can find you next and what you're working on. Sure, yeah, just going into this NHL season with my head down, working on any scouting we can from, you know, Russia, Sweden, Finland, and then uh, the NWHL bubble. Uh, they're playing a tournament. It's going to be a really fun format. Like I said, it ends in a weekend that they're on NBC for three games. So really excited to see the woman at that level, too. And then my social media channels are at Megan Chaika for both uh, Instagram and Twitter. Yep, guys, make sure you follow Megan. Thank you so much for being on the show. And guys, we'll see you next time. Bottoms up, bitches.